Hey, everybody, what's going on? Had to uh, open up my audio there. How's it going? We're back for another Let's Talk Jurassic here on uh, a lovely Wednesday night. Uh, this is the Jurassic Park podcast here on YouTube. Uh, we do a weekly live stream. Like I said, every Wednesday night, we do our podcast every week, every Monday. Uh, and this week, we might as well start off by talking about our episode for this week. Um, if you guys have not downloaded and listened to the podcast yet for this week, we have a really, really fun one for you guys. It's uh, our patented Jurassic Mailbag segment with myself and Jennifer Evans, where we go over listener questions, emails, voicemails, all kinds of calls and stuff like that all pertaining to Jurassic, and uh, it's a really fun segment. A lot of people called in, and we actually got talking all about some really fun stuff this past week, um, which I think you guys will really, really like. Uh, a lot of theories and stuff for Jurassic World 3, some really fun, interesting stuff, but that's besides the point. Go download the podcast tonight here uh, on Let's Talk Jurassic. We're going to be talking all about... Uh, Universal Studios Beijing and uh, some recent photos and stuff popped up uh, online via uh, theme park theme parks uh, dot com. That's theme park with an X, not a K at the end. So go to that website and uh, we're going to take a look at some of the pictures that were found over on that website posted by um, Michael. So. Uh, that's just what we wanted to take a look at tonight because there's some real good progress going on over there. There's some fun stuff that they're adding to that section, mostly food. Um, but it's nice to know that there's a full Jurassic World, like from from scratch, a full Jurassic World being built in a Universal Studios theme park. So that is that's really cool. That is really cool to find out about. And uh, we're going to take a look at some of those pictures that were uploaded Um and I'm excited to do that. So why don't we go ahead? Uh, if you guys have any questions, thoughts, whatever it may be in the uh, the chat, go ahead, leave them over there in the live chat. I'll try to get to them if I can. And uh, go ahead, just start the conversation over there. So let's move over here to uh, we're going to take a look at some of these pictures. So let me change things up a little bit and bring up our slideshow for you guys. So transitioning over we're going to be talking about these pictures here so this again uh is all stuff from uh michael over on themeparks.com and uh this first one here is pretty interesting uh, i'm really really interested to dive into these pictures so again i don't know where these came from or anything like that but they've been posted on the website haven't been taken down they've been shared all over the place so far so I gave it a little bit of time figuring, you know, maybe if if they're going to get taken down, we might as well wait a little bit, but they're still there. So let's go ahead and take a look at these pictures. They've been posted all in different Facebook groups and on Twitter and whatnot. So let's take a look here. This first one. Um, let me bring it up uh, this. OK, so you can see the site plans here. Um, hopefully, hopefully you can make that all out. Um, don't pay attention to that item that's all the way on the left, but the right portion of that picture is what we're really going to be looking at. The left portion uh, seems to be some minion stuff, uh, an illumination, you know, kind of thing. So we're talking about the stuff on the right hand side, which is the Jurassic World site plan for Universal Studios Beijing. So this is a brand new park that is being built currently. Um, well, it might be on. It might currently be on hold due to the entire uh, virus that's uh, spreading around China right now. So, um, you know, we're thinking about everybody out there because that's kind of scary. So I think that might be on hold for the time being until things are figured out with that. But um, it is still an ongoing project, and this is currently, you know, pretty heavily built. And uh, this is the plans that we're looking at here. So you can see the site plans here. There's a lot of different buildings uh, you see a Jurassic World dark ride in this big, there's a big square on the box there. Um, you see something called a buffeteria. Um, and you obviously have the innovation center. You have an aviary. You've got a bunch of st uh, different stuff. So let's take a look at the list here. You've got attractions, an aviary, uh, which you can see over there. Uh, it's a big glass dome. It's going to be like exactly like you see in Jurassic World, which is crazy. And once you see the pictures of this thing actually being built, 
it's kind of mind blowing that they're this is like a legit thing that they're building. Um, you also have the Innovation Center and Dark Ride, so you can tell in, in the picture there is a Innovation Center type area uh, with the the pyramid um, going up there. It looks exactly like the one in Jurassic World, and behind it is that giant Dark Ride. Um, no information has been officially revealed as far as the dark ride is concerned. Um, and I wouldn't really necessarily say these are officially released, but um, they've been up there and they've been shared around, so we figured we'd tackle them. Uh, we also have a few restaurants that are being planned here. Hammond's Fine Dining. So there's going to be some fine dining in there. You get a nice big, uh, looks like well-themed building down on the bottom portion near the lagoon. Uh, you have the Overlook Cafe Fast Food. Now, uh, that is on the right-hand side next to the uh, – uh, actually, I'm not really sure which one that is. If it's going to be – yeah, it's probably the one on the, the right-hand side. Um, and then you also have Bird of Prey Fast Food, which I'm assuming is over near the aviary. Um this is kind of my first time diving deep into these pictures, to be honest. So we're kind of going through them all with you right here. You have the Amber Ridge Buffeteria. Um, so there's, you know, some sort of buffet up top, Amber Ridge. I'm liking the names on all these things. Um, and then there's a retail area, uh, exit retail for the dark ride. So um, you can't really see anything per se, but it is probably off to the left, I'm assuming, of the Innovation Center. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about those names. We have Hammond's Fine Dining. Uh, that's, some, that's something that's, that's pretty – I mean, it's going to be elegant. It's going to be very nice, upscale dining. And it kind of contradicts things in a way, just like in my mind. I'm thinking about Hammond, who is the guy who's talking about, you know, this, this is not a place that's only going to be catering to the super rich. Um, so, Yes, he did have a very fine dining area in the Jurassic Park uh, Visitor Center, but it's just like conflicting in my mind. Uh, you have the Overlook Cafe, um, which sounds cool. I don't know how that's going to play out. I'm interested to see. Maybe it's got a nice overlook. Um, doesn't really play into anything Jurassic per se. Uh, Bird of Prey, obviously, um, that could mean anything. That could be a flying one. It could be... Uh, raptor uh so actually maybe the bird of prey one is over here since the raptor training experiment does it say experiment uh i don't know what that says the raptor training uh maybe experience uh experience is over there so raptor means bird of prey that doesn't look very scary more like a six foot turkey so maybe they're going to be uh offering a lot of six foot turkeys over there on the right hand side and maybe the overlook is over at the aviary sorry all right i think i figured it out now uh Amber Ridge, which I believe is up at the top. That's the Buffeteria. I like that name, Amber Ridge. That's pretty cool. Um, all right. So any questions on that? Are you guys saying anything? Uh, not too much just yet. But, um, yeah, let's move on to the next one here. So, uh, well, I, maybe I should talk about the image itself. But um, it's not a very big-looking land. I... I don't know. I mean, that, that doesn't seem too, too big. It looks like, a, you know, you're going to go through two gates on either side. You have one down here. Oh, my hands are backwards. One down here and one up here. Um, and you kind of curve down around the visitor center, around the aviary, and then across a little bridge, which is nice. Lots of trees and vegetation surrounding there. You've got a nice area for the raptor experience um, and just so many restaurants. The aviary is going to have a coaster as well. We'll take a look at that as well. But, um, yeah, let's go ahead and move on here to the next image. So what do we got here next? All right. Oh, okay. So it's literally the same thing. So any more details? No, you can't really see too much there. But, um, yeah, that's just a, a bigger picture for you. So it, it looks beautiful. Like everything they've created there looks awesome. I can't wait to see the, the waterfront on this. Um, there's a lot of which you can see all the way over underneath the aviary, there's a lot of rock work going on. There's some big mountains that are going to be towering over this land, which is fantastic, really beautiful stuff. All right, so now we're diving into some good stuff here. So this is some concept art, uh, some uh, 
some visuals as far as what this place is going to look like. So which one is this? Um, I'm going to open up my picture here. So this, I'm going to assume, is the overlook, which looks like it's attached inside the um, aviary because you can see the giant windows in there. It really looks like the aviary style place. Um, you have imagery throughout the 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 ordering stations and above the seating areas, which really feature pteranodons uh, and flying creatures like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, I, I'm liking the design here. It's very subtle. It's very elegant. Um, even if these are quick service or, or what be it, um, they're very nice looking. They're not, they don't look very cheap or anything like that. Um, fancy decorations. You got some circle pendant lighting, uh, strip lighting fixtures, um, and yeah, I love those designs for the pteranodons and the flying dinosaurs. Those are really cool. The ones that kind of hang above you on the light fixtures and stuff like that. That's that's some nice stuff. Um, yeah, you got your queue area, indoor dining, indoor seating, outdoor unprotected seating. So that's pretty cool. It's going to maybe overlook some part of land. So you've got an outdoor section as well, which I don't think seems too visual here um yeah it's not uh i'm not really seeing much in the way of outdoor um but that's pretty cool looking either way i'm i'm really digging this oh and that that nest pendant lighting which i'm not i'm not sure if you can see it, but it's over towards the left uh that looks really cool it looks like a nest with like eggs or light fixture in there it's it's kind of hard to tell some of these pictures are a little blurry but um hopefully you can make everything out pretty well uh, that looks awesome. I am really digging that one. Um, all right, so let's move over here. Um, and again, that is the Overlook Cafe. Uh, very cool looking place. This one, let's see. Ooh, this is, uh, okay, wait. Oh, okay. Whoa, well, this is interesting. I I'm kind of confused here. What is going on? So let me go back just a tad. Okay, so bird of prey fast food, and the attraction is aviary. But then we move over here. And this is the aviary, but it also says bird of prey. So what is going on here? What What's the details here? Um, trying to make this all out with you guys. So maybe this is some sort of early concept. This looks a lot earlier as far as uh, the structure of everything. So you do have a, another restaurant down there, which it seems to be when you look back, it looks like the same style of restaurant just brought to life a little bit differently. Um, you do have the paneling, uh, the window panels and stuff like that. Uh, technically it looks very similar. So if you look, you see those pteranodons flying over there on the left hand side, it looks pretty similar to what you see right there. Uh, also on the same spot, if you just look at that, it just a little bit smaller. Uh, you see the window panels and stuff right there, but it's just brought to life in a little bit different fashion. Um, so is this bird of prey fast food or is this the lookout? I don't even know at this point. Who knows? I'm kind of lost now. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is pretty interesting. This is going to be the this is kind of like the schematics and everything of the aviary section. Uh, you've got the layout of the food area down there as well. Um, and like the, the bones, the real bones of this, uh, aviary and mountain work, which is really cool. You can actually see kind of inside the mountain work on the top left, uh, and portions where the coaster kind of weaves in and out of the mountain top and outside of the mountain. Um, and then it, it does seem to go inside the aviary, which is pretty cool. So, um, and then on the, yeah, next to that, on the top right, you see that full aviary, um, plan and it looks like you've got some queuing in there. Um, and you can see the cutout, the grade area where the restaurant should be. Um, 
Very cool. So it's kind of hard to make it out. It's very faint, but there's a lot going on on that uh, schematic there. Maybe there's, uh, you know, I can't really tell, but there may, there might be some sort of play areas or something down in there inside the aviary. It's kind of hard to tell. All right, so I'm looking at the chat here. Salty Nerd Podcast comes in and asks, um, are these concept uh, arts for the films or uh, a real park? And uh, no, this is a real park. Um, this is uh, Universal Studios Beijing in China. So this, as you can see on the bottom of the screen, this was posted by Michael over on themeparks.com. So go check out the link. It is in the description below if you want to follow along. Um, see some bigger images, but, um, yeah, this is, uh, this is real stuff. This is legit. It's being built. It's actually happening. So, uh, keep your eyes peeled cause it's going to be really cool. Um, but yeah, let's move over here to the next image, uh, which is, let's see. Ooh. Okay. All right. So this, let's see, which one is this? Um, This, I'm assuming, is probably Amber Ridge. How do I know? Well, uh, I'm just taking a guess based off of these colors here. It looks very amber-like. Um, it looks more um, like a quick service -y kind of buffet-style area just because of the seating and stuff like that. Uh, you, you know, you pack a lot more people in in a place like this with these more uh, these these kind of uh, seating arrangements. Um, but man, this place is really really cool. This is awesome. I'm loving the amber touches um, in this style. Now, I can't say officially that this is the way that stuff is gonna look on the back end once once everything is done. But these are certainly renderings and. Uh, concepts for what they are. So maybe that'll change. Like with the images before, we saw different variations of the same thing. So this could, I, I'm not going to guarantee that this is exactly what it's going to look like, but right now this is what we have to, to look at. So you do see, uh, which I'm assuming that is the buffet area where you would walk up. You got to your, your counter there where you slide your tray across and you have the different stations, the glass work down there where you would look into whatever they are offering and somebody standing back there about to scoop out the food or whatever. Um, that back wall looks to be uh, severy, Se severe, what, severe, what is that word? Severy? Back wall tile? Uh, I don't know what that says. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. But um, it uh, it looks like amber, which is fantastic. I'm loving the color scheme in this. All these oranges, that artwork that is on the wall. Love it. I love it. The thing I am I'm really enjoying here is what I see so far is not except for the the lighting fixtures in this <laughs> in this place. It's not stamped and branded Jurassic World. Um, which, you know, it's, it's kind of hard. It's, it's, a, it's a fine line you have to toe when you're making a theme park, right? When you're building a Disney or a Universal or something like that, you don't want just a, a Mickey head or a Universal logo every five feet, right? So I think the same thing has to apply to a Jurassic World legit theme park. If you're actually building a real Jurassic World, you're not going to just stamp Jurassic World every 10 feet, uh, you want to give people something natural, something uh, realistic, and I think that's what they're doing here with this Jurassic World um, land out in China. Um, and you can see, like, outside of those that light, light fixture up there, um, which seems to have, like, the T-Rex uh, fossil logo. Uh, it doesn't say Jurassic World, but it just has the fossil logo. Um, but outside of that, you have this amazing artwork of, of this, like, sunset or sunrise uh just landscapes with dinosaurs and it really looks like something out of an, like an old dinosaur art book or uh, something like that. That's really, really cool. And I'm liking this, like this station over here, which maybe this is like a, I don't know what that is, but um, on the right hand side, you have this like rock work and stuff. So this is making me also think about the Amber vibe. It's like, you're going into an Amber mine uh, or a mining area like that. The seating area kind of looks like a mining facility 
Um, and then you have the rock work down there where they're probably digging out the, the amber. Uh, that's very cool. So you, you got a lot of uh, blue acrylic, it looks like, being used here with some dinosaur f claws and stuff like that. Uh, rustic touches, faux iron beams, um, stamped concrete, uh, very cool looking stuff. Rough plaster. plaster. Um, it's nice. It's nice. It looks like a, a real lived in facility that you would see. So that's that's pretty cool. Really digging the vibe in this place, which I'm assuming is the amber, uh, what do you call it? Uh, what did I, what did I say it was? Amber Ridge Buffeteria. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, let's see what else we got moving on to the next one. Amber Ridge. Okay. So, uh, maybe it's the same place. <laughs> With any of these pictures, I'm like, I don't know what this is. I'm thinking it's this thing, but maybe it's something else completely. But, uh, all right, so Amber Ridge, uh, where did I put that picture? All right, so Amber Ridge. Um, yeah, there's a lot going on again on this one. You have the Q, uh, whatever this, what is this word? Serve, servery? Oh, like this, like the area where you're served? A servery? I didn't know that's what that was called. Okay. Um, indoor dining. You have outdoor protected seating and outdoor unprotected seating. So you get that and the kitchen. Um, very cool. So this is all one level, it looks like. Um, and I'm assuming that outdoor seating is going to be under that scaffolding there outside of the um, – the glass windows and stuff like that. Um, and maybe there's some protected seating if that one of those things are covered over. I'm not too sure. Uh, but I'm like, I'm digging the, the vibe of the outside of this because, like I said before, it kind of reminds me of like a, a mining facility and you're kind of entering a mine shaft or something like that in this ridge. That's really cool. Uh, Amber Ridge, you know? Um, that's awesome. Really liking that. Liking the rock work that goes over the the windows, uh, over the entry. That is very cool. And you got the grass or, or ferns and stuff like that all over. That's that's really cool. Um, seat requirements. Uh, let's see here. Actual seat requirements. You got 252 outdoor seating. Protected 104. Outdoor seats unprotected, 24. Total seats, 380. High chairs, 11. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, so it does look like maybe the protected seats are, yeah, they seem to be more towards the entrance, which should be a covered over area. And you can see the uh, pillars and stuff. There's just no roofing on that section, so I'm assuming that's something to be added on later. Um, in that big diagram uh, on the middle uh, of the bottom there, you have, let's see, one is the queue. So that's where you enter through those double doors there, go through the queue, and then two is where you're served the food. Like I said, that's where the amber wall is. You have the kitchen behind that, which is uh, number six. Um, and so you go along, you order your food from left to right, and then you pay over on the right-hand side um, at that station. So I don't know if maybe that rock work is, is where you pay or not, but uh, that could be part of the paying area. Um, and then three is the indoor seating, a lot of indoor seating in there, which uh, seems to be about 252 spots. You have um, booths all across the edges, table across the edges, tables in the middle, booths in the middle. That's pretty cool. Lots of seats there. Anything else we can see? No, not too much. Things look a little bit different up top. Um, but no, I'm liking this. This is Amber Ridge. That's pretty cool. Again, liking the natural vibe of that place. It looks really, really nice. All right, so let's move on here to the next one, if I can. Oh, all right, so we got some actual pictures here to look at of the construction. Uh, 
Yeah, Epic Universe does not seem to be getting any kind of Jurassic World stuff, unfortunately. So, um, again, thinking about everybody over in China right now with the virus, uh, hopefully, you know, that uh, that's a scary situation. Hopefully that fixes itself up soon. I'm um, just thinking about everybody over there. Um, and I know a lot of people are want to, are, are going to want to visit this park and, um, you know, hopefully we, everybody gets the opportunity. Um, so let's see, what do we got next? Like I said, oh, you get the, uh, shot of the, of the mountaintop. So these pictures I believe were posted within the past few months or so. Uh, man, my video is like, when I put my arms up, oh, the background is really coming through there. <laughs> let's see if I can fix that real quick. Uh, hey, I put my hand up. Select color. Did it go away? No, not. <laughs> no, it's I don't know. Whatever. Um, but yeah, that mountaintop looks really great. Oh no, I just made it way worse. <laughs> oh, now my head's disappearing. Doing it live, guys. All right, that's as good as it's going to get right now. Um, all right, so very cool mountaintop area with that coaster that kind of goes in and out. I, I'm kind of – I don't like really know what this coaster is, to be honest. Um, maybe once we get a, a few closer looks here, maybe I can uh, kind of decipher what's going on. But so far, I don't know. Um, it looks like uh, some sort of hanging coaster, so – I don't know. Maybe this is like a Pteranodon Flyers. Um, maybe that's a safe bet. Let me actually look at... Um, I want to check out the structure of Pteranodon Flyers. That Now, Pteranodon Flyers is a, an attraction in Universal Orlando in Islands of Adventure, and now, you know, it looks very different than Pteranodon Flyers. Pteranodon Flyers is essentially a single beam. And uh, it has multiple supports throughout the land, and it kind of just travels. Um, it's kind of like, a, you know, like the seats that you would sit in in like um, a swing, um, well, like a swing ride, kind of like that perched underneath a Pteranodon as you fly through the land. Um, now, like I said, this looks a bit different. Um let me see if I can find anything about this attraction. If this is called Bird of Prey, um, let's see. I'm not seeing anything. All right, well, let's keep looking through the pictures anyway. Um, very cool, though. I, I I don't know. Everything about this makes it look like it might be a slower coaster, but, you know, that there is a, which I'm assuming is going to be a decline there. It's it's probably going from right to left um, in that picture. So you've got the higher area there, and then you're going to kind of coast down, around again, and then I don't know where you're going to go from there. Um, Looks looks fantastic though, and the, this this mountain is huge. It's really really huge, um, so that's pretty cool. Again, these are posted as you can see on themeparks.com. That's theme parks with an X instead of a K. Um, moving on here. Okay, so here's an indoor shot from inside. Uh, which actually is this inside the aviary or is this inside the mountain? It's a good question. It's kind of hard to tell. I'm thinking it's the aviary. But I'm not sure what all of that metal is there. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I don't really know what that... Uh... Let me see what... Oh, I want to look up another coaster here. Um, I just, cause I want to find out what kind of coaster is this? Um, it does not look like it would, it looks a little too small to be something that you would hang, 
um, as in like a, like a Superman type coaster or, or or the flying dinosaur coaster that is out in um, uh, Japan, I believe. So that's interesting, but there's a lot of support work in there. Interesting stuff. But I'm sure at some point you are hanging in this attraction, whether you're seated in a position or flying some other way. I have no clue. But, uh, ooh, did I move over? Okay, I just did that. All right, so, yeah, this is a – look at this picture, guys. Like, that is massive. That is out of control. Like, that is an aviary right there. It, it is legit. It looks just like what you see in Jurassic World being built. Like, that is so cool. This honestly, like, you could look at these pictures and be like, this is Jurassic World being built uh, pre-2005, you know, when they're getting this park set up. Uh, this is really awesome. That is so fantastic. Man, and I mean, you could pr get a pretty uh, good idea of the scope of this thing because of the machinery that's around there. Um, that's that's massive, man. That is huge. Um, loving that. So moving on here. Ooh, we got a good one here of the Innovation Center entrance. Very cool. So, yeah, I mean, this, this totally replicates what you see in the movie. Um, you're going to have uh, the brown supports on the pyramid and then the glass work. Uh, very cool. And then you this this um, side structures on either side of the entrance. Um, awesome. Now, this is going to be the entrance to an attraction. So you'll probably start queuing up inside the Innovation Center here. And I'm sure they'll do their best to replicate what we see in the movie. That's very cool. And then behind this building is... Um, another giant building which i'm sure they'll they'll hide via force perspective and and uh just behind the facades here um and it's going to be a giant building which you will enter the ride um and a big massive indoor ride so this this should be pretty awesome moving on here another shot of the coaster yeah Again, don't know. I've never actually looked too hard into that type of track there. So it's got the center beam, but also the side beams. I'm not really sure what's going on. Interesting. I'll have to ask around. That's cool. But yeah, I, I really can't tell, like, I can't gauge the speed on this kind of attraction here. It doesn't seem like it's going to be an overly long coaster if it is, if it does have some sort of decent speed um but uh yeah i'm hoping it's kind of like a slow glider but I, I don't even know if that would be thrilling enough so who knows who knows um and this is a, a far away shot of um more construction here and you can get a good gauge at how big that mountain is you've got um a transformers coaster which is essentially a clone of the hulk attraction in orlando uh the hulk coaster and then you've got the – you can see the aviary, uh, some of the restaurant work over there on the left, and uh, the giant mountains, the crane up above everything. That is fantastic. I am loving the size and scope of that land. They're really putting everything into this. Um, and, yeah, I think we're back at the beginning, guys. That's awesome. I think that's everything. So, what do you think? What what's uh what's your favorite aspects of this land? Like, what do you what are you most looking forward to here? Are you um, excited for the the coaster, which we don't know too much about? Are you excited for the giant uh, Jurassic World dark ride that's up there, uh, or are you just hungry? Are you a very very hungry Jurassic fan? Um, I find it interesting that there's just so many food options. Uh, when I initially saw like the plans for this and or the concept art for this land, um, I kind of I saw a lot of this this these buildings and stuff uh, all around the uh, land, and I was really hoping for some interesting, innovative um, attractions or locations, stores, whatever it may be. Um, but a lot of it just seems to be taken up by food areas, so cafes, fine dining, um, actually. You know, one of the images that did not pop up. Let me see if I can get that working for you guys. I don't know why that didn't pop up. 
Um, did I skip it? Or maybe it just didn't come up. All right, let me see if I can get this one in there for you guys. Um, this is because it's a pretty interesting one. Um, this is uh, it should be a picture of John Hammond's place, which I don't know why that didn't pop up before. Um, oh, there's actually looks like uh, maybe a few didn't pop up. Um, all right, so this is John Hammond's. Let me just fix the sizing on this thing. Um, all right, so again, this is John Hammond's place here. So this is the uh, fine dining that we're going to be getting here uh, via John Hammond. <laughs> Um, and you can see uh, kind of behind me, you've got uh, some seating areas, very, very fine dining. Um, I'm loving like the DNA structure kind of in the middle there. You've got some um, amber work on near some tables and stuff like that. Uh, this is a very circular restaurant, so I'm sure you can see all these different um, – what what are we talking about here? This The ceiling, decorative truss – Decorative truss, um, faux wood grain, printed material wrapped acoustic panel. So, yeah, whatever this is, it just looks real fancy, real high end. I'm loving the um, uh, the imagery that's all along here. It's, it's, again, it's like kind of natural dinosaur depictions. Actually, it really looks like a lot of what you see in Islands of Adventure um like the murals and stuff that they have out there those murals along the walls are very nice now these look like almost carved in like bronze or something like that or maybe this is just rock i'm not sure but i'm loving that that is fantastic there's like a t-rex maybe some like raptors over there in that top picture um and then a lot of stuff like a trike over there in the middle picture i can't tell if those are all like fossils or not but um the trike one doesn't look like it but, uh, man, this looks like a really fancy upscale place with some amazing views. Really, really cool. And, like, look at the ceiling work. Is that the ceiling? Oh, no, that's the ground. Okay, that's the ground that you actually see. So it looks like... All right, so I'm trying to figure out... Maybe that's the kitchen down there on the right... And I don't know what those are, maybe bathroom areas, but you have a big seating area. We don't have the um, information as far as what, um, you know, as far as like how many seats or anything. But you can see a big circular seating area, another smaller circular seating area, maybe um, one in the middle there. And uh, a foyer area, and maybe that other is the entrance. I don't know, that's a really small dining area, if that is another dining area. But again, this is going to be very fancy, very um, upscale, probably very expensive um, compared to a lot of those other options that we saw. Um, so, all right, let's see. What did we see already? We did not see this one. Okay, so this is also going to be Hammond's. Um, we saw that. We saw that. We saw this. Yep, we saw that. Saw that. Did not see that. Saw this. Saw this. All right. I'm just going through my images here. We didn't. We just saw that one. All right. And everything else we did see. So let me bring up one last picture here for you guys. Um, I'll see if I can change this. And this should be the outside of that same area there. So I just switched it up for you. This is Hammond's. Um, All right, so the outside area uh, for Hammonds, and you can see those that those domes actually like <laughs> in this like concept here, the digital concept. It looks like those like three uh, circular designs almost look like they're straight out of like Star Wars. <laughs> it looks like like the uh, Senate building or something like that. That's funny, but yeah, you can see. 
uh, the kitchen area behind their facilities and stuff like that. And then the three, uh, I'm assuming dining or, or you know what? Looking at that other, the portion, uh, the diagram on the right, it does look like that smaller one is the entry. I'm, a, I'm I believe there that's the entry. And then you have a main dining and another main dining. So those are two main dinings. Uh, and then that center area, which, um, yeah, from the uh, previous Hammond area, there's like a center, which you can make out. Um, let's see if I can point to it. Uh, right. Oh, my finger's getting cut off. In between those two bigger circles is a private dining. Interesting. Interesting. Exhibition kitchen. Is that what this says? This is very hard. Service bar, kitchen, back of house, storage. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah, so that entire building area is uh, mostly seems to be back of house. Fire, alarm room, women's washroom, men's washroom. Um, yeah, so that's where the bathrooms and back of house uh service areas and stuff like that for the kitchen. Um, and then the main dining, main dining, um, private dining, and then the entry uh, lobby. So yeah, very cool stuff. And then you can also kind of make out some other details here on the right hand side. Uh, that's pretty cool. There's, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there. But um, a lot of stuff going on inside. Level one. I don't think there's any other levels there. But um, Nice. So that is also the outdoor and the floor plan for Hammonds. Um, very cool. Now, uh, what was I going to, I was going to compare it to something else. Um, what was it? Oh, oh yeah. I wanted to just take a look at the overall so you can kind of get a glimpse again at, uh, so where Hammonds is, you can see down there in the bottom or middle area, um, you have that white portion, which is the back of house area with the kitchen and the bathrooms and stuff like that. And then uh, the three buildings with the private dining in the middle and the entry. So, uh, let me bring it up for myself here so I can see, um, yeah. Yeah, I I'm hoping this is a, a a bigger land than it seems, and maybe there's some good stuff going on in the aviary um, outside of the attraction. I'm sure that's mostly attraction space, but um, I don't really know what they got planned in there. Um, and then you get the fast food, fast food, Velociraptor training experience. Um, I wonder if that's going to be – because it's, it's mentioned as Velociraptor training experience. Um, and I know the other ones are kind of like raptor encounters. So is this going to be a little bit different? I don't know. Um, probably not. If they want to keep people moving in and out, they got to be quick. Honestly, when I just did it, I, I went down to Orlando recently. And um, I you know took the picture with Blue with my son. And we were – because like they filmed it for me. And we were in and out in like 28 seconds. And that's how fast they get you through. And it feels, when you're in the moment, it feels like enough time for the raptor encounter because you're like, oh, okay, I'm taking my picture, I get to look at it for a second, and they quickly tell you to turn around, turn around, look towards us. It doesn't like you looking at it. So they try to be cheeky about the entire thing. Um, but they get you in and out of that really fast. Um, I don't know if that's going to be a queuing area. It looks like maybe um, outside of the raptor experience. Um, but yeah, so much food, so much food and lots of good views. I'm sure. Uh, what does that say down there? Can't really tell what that says. Land boundary line. Um, so it would be nice to actually take a, like a walk. Uh, I'm assuming you can walk all the way around Hammonds and then down. Uh, maybe there's like a little waterfall over there. I'm not too sure. kind of looks like it. Um, and then maybe some water falling off of the mountain areas. Water, uh, which I, I don't know. Are they going to paint that coaster? I don't think so because it looks orange in the pictures here. But all the supports and everything are green. I don't know. Maybe they're going to paint that, but I'm not too sure. 
um, at this point that they would do that. Um, but uh, yeah, everything about this looks real beautiful. Loving it, guys. Loving it. So is anybody saying anything? I have not looked in a very long while uh, at the chat room. Hope everybody's been enjoying themselves, having a good time. Um, but yeah, any, any questions about this park in general? Uh, let me scroll back up here. There's been a lot of comments. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 3D Cree says we need Alicia Stella here to give some insight. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to have her on the podcast sometime soon. She, she was on the show, uh, a long time ago, like years ago. And then I went on her show more recently, but um, yeah, we have to make that happen again. Um, this park will be really cool. What type of attractions will they have? Rides, spare no expense. Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully they're they're sparing no expense. It seems like so. Like I'm sure you've heard already. I uh, got a coaster attraction and a, a giant Jurassic World dark ride experience, which um, it seems like it might be something along the lines of like what they've created with maybe something like Transformers or um, Spider-Man, something like that. That would be pretty cool. Um, it would be funny if they had a mock emergency in the park, like if an animal got out or something, you know. Some parks have done that, actually. I believe, whether it's Singapore or Japan, I'm not too sure. Uh, maybe Singapore. One of those parks does, like, like kind of like an emergency situation where, like, you hear sirens going off, like, eh, eh, stuff like that. And uh, dinosaurs start roaming around. You get raptors roaming around. And I think there's, like, a triceratops and stuff like that. So... Uh, and I know one if it's the same park or not, I don't know, but like a uh, in, like a Spinosaurus actually comes out and uh, that is fantastic. Like so there there is the possibility that they could in, employ that in this park. I don't know officially. Um, and it doesn't look like there's any serviceable areas as far as like walk around characters go. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if they're gonna be opting for the, the approach of this park is intact. Um, honestly, maybe it looks like there's some garden type areas over um, to the left of the Jurassic World Dark Ride building. So maybe that could be like a, an encounter area where maybe some meet and greets happen with a Triceratops or something like that. Or maybe they bring out some puppet characters um, across from the aviary. Maybe there's some area for roaming around characters. Um, yeah, I don't know. Interesting. Interesting thoughts. Not too sure. I'm assuming like with every other Jurassic World land that they would employ some sort of roam around characters. Uh, let's see what else you guys got going here. Looks like the whole park is going to be covered in rocks. It does. Um, yeah, there we go again. I wish we had this in, in Epic Universe. Not happening. Um, yeah, imagine Pteranodons flying in the aviary from outside. Um, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen unless they have drone uh, Pteranodons flying all over the place. But I wouldn't be surprised if they are able to rig up some sort of viewing area where you could see some sort of, uh, you know, puppetry or animatronic pteranodons in some form or fashion. I mean, if you do have an aviary, it, it makes sense. You, you need to be able to see something flying, right? I mean, you need to be able to see something. I, I just don't know how they would do it. Um, but uh, that's not that's why I'm not in charge of making that. So. Yeah, somebody here, uh, Salty Nerd, mentions the way they need to go is VR. 
I I agree. Uh, that's kind of like what I was saying before is when I saw all of the buildings that are located around this land, I kind of was wondering if maybe something would be VR related um, because, you know, outside of some of the dinosaur encounters, you can have these nice minimal experiences with raptor encounters and stuff like that, but you're not really getting that in-your-face scary moments um, that you would get with dinosaurs. And I think a VR experience could be something like that. Um, and I don't know if anybody here has done stuff like, um, what do you call it, the the Void? Uh, the Void does the VR experiences where you wear like the um, – like a vest thing or and like a headset and you walk around a small area very small just um everything you see in vr is just giant and massive and crazy um and uh i was hoping maybe they would do something like that it doesn't really seem like it though unless they're hiding something um we'll see um let's see here Yeah, please let there be a Mosasaurus in that lagoon, says Ian. Um, that's interesting. I I would, I think we've all kind of wondered uh, how does a Mosasaurus fit into this land. Um, and maybe that's something that's in the dark ride. Who knows? There might be a portion where a Mosasaurus jumps out of a small lagoon area or something as you're, you're going around the park. I don't know. Um, but it would be cool if they did something. But knowing uh, Universal and their lagoons, they might end up doing like a lagoon show at some point. So maybe, um, you know, having something like that is kind of not feasible when they're when they plan on doing a lagoon show. I, I don't know if they are, but with some parks and uh, lagoon shows being really, really big and popular right now. I wouldn't be surprised if they went with a lagoon show in there with giant water spray effects with projections. Um, they do it in Universal, uh, Universal Studios Florida, and it's awesome. And specifically, the Halloween Horror Nights version was absolutely incredible, one of the best nighttime shows you could ever see. So I'm sure they might end up doing something similar. I can't say for sure, but that would be my projection, at least, I would assume. But, uh, yeah, if they could get a Mosasaurus in there, that would be absolutely awesome. Um. holograms holograms i've seen a lot of mention here of holograms um that is something i think is 100 percent feasible um if you go into some new attractions um specifically star wars attractions in uh california or florida you do get hologram technology and it works flawlessly so i don't think it's it's something impossible and they could certainly, when you're queuing up maybe inside the Innovation Center area, uh, in the rotunda there, I'm sure they could have uh, some sort of effect where you don't see it, but you don't see the glass or whatever it may be. But um, I'm sure they could make it work with the hologram technology. You see the raptors or the, um, the Dilophosaurus or whatever it may be in that rotunda. That would be incredible. And I think if you're going to make a hologram, that's where it needs to be. Um, so I would not be surprised, and I think that would be awesome of them to do. Hopefully they can get on that. Um, yeah, but I'm coming to the end here, guys. Thank you. This has been fun. Uh, got through your comments there, so thank you, everybody out there. And, of course, if you are still watching this, go ahead and leave comments in the actual comment section of this video. We'd really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed looking at... Uh, what they're offering at Universal Studios Beijing coming up uh, in as, as long as everything goes to uh, plan. I'm assuming this is going to be uh, sometime in the spring of next year, I think. Hopefully. I'm not sure. Don't, don't hold me to that. I don't know. Why is my background freaking out? Um, <laughs> but uh, I, I love theme parks. I love talking about them. I have another theme park show. So if you want to hear me talk all about theme parks themselves, um, go ahead and listen to Grim Grinning Hosts. Uh, that is my theme park podcast with a few other guys uh, on there as well. So that's awesome. Uh, I'm just a, a small part of that show. But uh, we talk theme parks all the time. Jurassic comes up often. So go check that out. I am excited to talk about theme parks whenever I can, and especially when it comes to Jurassic. So 
we're not done yet, guys. We're going to be talking about theme parks for years to come. I'm excited to see what happens in the future. Hopefully, I get the chance to go out to this park sometime soon. And again, we're thinking about everybody over in China uh, with the virus, and hopefully everything works out soon. Um, it's a terrible situation, so hopefully everybody's doing okay. Um, but yeah. Thank you guys for watching and make sure to go to uh, JurassicParkPodcast.com to find all of our stuff over there. You can find our podcast, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. We're on Spotify as well, so go download the show. Uh, this week, again, to recap, we have the Jurassic Mailbag. So if you guys are unfamiliar with the podcast, uh, it's just an audio form show. It's not the video that you're getting here today. But you get to hear some pretty interesting stuff, which I do not usually upload here to YouTube. And, um, uh, yeah, so the, the Jurassic Mailbag this week is pretty awesome. We get into some big theories and stuff for Jurassic World 3, come up with some awesome ideas, I think, for flashbacks, prequels, all kinds of crazy stuff. And uh, I think you guys will really like that. A lot of stuff pertaining to, like, Dr. Henry Wu. Uh, so go check that out. Um, yeah, and go follow us over on Twitter, at Jurassic Park Pod, on Instagram, uh, at Jurassic Park Podcast. Same thing over on Facebook. Search for the Jurassic Park Podcast. Also, we do have a Facebook group. So if you guys want to join our Facebook group, just search for the Jurassic Park Podcast and answer two simple questions. Um, one of which is, who is a host or a contributor for the podcast? And, uh, I mean, I'm one of them. So Brad, uh, we've got so many other people. Aaron, Arjun, Tom... Uh, Jen, there's, uh, sorry if I left everybody out, I know there's a bunch more guys, um, but we also have another question which is, um, what is it, an actor, I think, what is it, an actor or a name a character, I think it's an actor, um, and uh, you have to name an actor from the movie, so do those two things and we'll, ant we'll let you into the Facebook group, otherwise if you don't answer those questions, we just deny you because we want to keep it fun entertaining for people who listen to the show or watch the show here on youtube um we keep it fun for everybody over there so we're always sharing some good stuff over there stuff that we don't share everywhere else go check out that facebook group and um yeah i think that's about it here on youtube make sure to subscribe like this video share it around comment below thank you all so much for watching this video it's uh like i said i love doing these live streams so make sure to check us out again next Wednesday. I'm sure we'll come up with some good topics. This is the start of uh, production uh, for Jurassic World 3 this month. So hopefully we got some good tidbits coming in. We just recently did a live stream last week on Friday where Colin decided to showcase that animatronic puppet thingy, uh, the Nesutoceratops, as we were live streaming. So we went ahead and showcased everything about that all on the fly, learning about it as we were going. Uh, that was a lot of fun. And guys, this coming week on the podcast, we got some fun stuff. I talked with Mattel and we learned all about the toy line, what's coming, how things are, uh, how they've been in the past, how they are now. Uh, and there's some fun stuff in there. I think you guys will really, really like that. So make sure to tune into the podcast over on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify.